Hannah, you have, uh, I'll, I'll say, a very accomplished, are a very accomplished practitioner of what we'll call the fiscally challenged, character-driven drama. So how do you... Really lovely way to put it. <laughs> we know what that means. You drive your I own truck. I know what that means, yeah. <laughs> so how did you adapt to this complicated and uh, creatively multi-layered world of the mega tent pole motion picture? And really is, what was your method of communicating to your visual, your visual aspirations to literally the thousands of creative uh, colleagues working in the back rooms to uh, create such a huge vision? Part one, <laughs> um, I, you know, I get asked that question about the budgets a lot because I do come from a very indie background. I mean, my background is indie, you know, I did one big film and, and that doesn't make me someone who does that often. So, but at the end of the day, you never have enough money. I learned that real quick. I learned that I think day three when I was like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, Golden City, that's like, what, 50 million? And you know what I mean? And they're like, mm, no, you, you don't have that. You know? And I'm like, wait, this is Marvel. So um, <laughs> that, you know, the hopes and dreams of it all just went dashing into the, and I was like, oh, there's like a budget? OK. So um, we have to adhere to a number? Like, I don't understand that. Um, <laughs> This is not what my dreams told me. So, um, so that was like, yeah, yeah. and you adapt very quickly because it's the same thing. It's the same sort of conversations about schedule, about locations, about time, which all dictate what your budget's going to be at the end of the day. And you know, you fight the good fights and you pick your battles and you horse trade and you do all the things that you need to do and you learn over time. I learned that very well because of small films. And you know, you got to be a little um, savvy on how you use your money. And, and so, you know, you're just being savvy on a bigger level and uh, you know that really helped me around sort of some of the politics of it and, and, and how to make a set, how to keep the integrity of a set but pull out numbers and, and stuff like that. So it, it's really not that different in the fiscal uh, department. Um, of course, I mean, you I had a lot a more zero, resources with Marvel. I had a lot more money. I had a lot a bigger team and things. So, yes, that is very different. But, you know, how I chose to use it and my process on how to deal with all of that, I laid right on the supervising art director and I walked away. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was like, this is all you. Um, but, you know what I mean? We dealt yeah. with that. And then, you know, we, we, I think the one thing Marvel really knew is that we wanted to build. You know, uh, Ryan and I, again, coming from a very indie world where everything is very tactile, um, you, get, you get used to telling a story that way and you want your, the actors to come in and be able to touch things and feel things. Um, so we were both a little hesitant at the idea of like, you just want us to build like a patch and then you'll do what? Right. You know, and there was some convincing as to like, no, that's great. And then there was a lot of me going, no, it's not great. Um, <laughs> so we, we, we found a, a, a really great place for that uh -huh. where we ended up doing a lot of building and I really fought hard to, to be right. able to do that for everybody. And I think that's one thing in a film of this size that you see less of, you know, is the, um, is the actual, is the physical practical builds. Um, part two, mm -hmm. I forget. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just um, loving part one. I don't know that we right. have to do part two. Well, no, it was how did you, you know, a, 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 again, um, and I think, act, just to follow what you're saying, I think actors really appreciate being in an environment that's tactile. Yes. You know, yes. And we would think, well, we can create a world in a green space, but it doesn't make for a better performance. It right. just makes for more visual. But th the second part was really that the question about how do you then communicate to so many other people, maintain a signature of your and Ryan's vision for this world when it has to then be passed on to so many people. I'm a monster. Translate. I mean, I'm just kidding. Well, there you go. <laughs> I just, right, Jay? I was just yelling at everybody. I'm just kidding. Um. In, in all time zones at once. <laughs> Every time zone. There's like three continents, many time zones. But you know, you just, for something like that, I, the nice thing about everyone that I was working for, or working for, working with, working with me, is that we all kind of knew that we wanted to step outside of the box, and Marvel was very willing to allow that to happen. You know, when we were doing our Viz Dev meetings and we'd walk in with all these crazy ideas, they were very like, yeah, that's really cool, and you're like, oh, okay. So, you know, you don't really expect that in that manner, and. Um, and, uh, you know, the nice thing about it is the ideas, you know, they would morph and change as they had to, but 
pretty much stayed, you know, as, as well, whatever the script changed, it pretty much stayed, the design ideas kind of stayed throughout, you know, and it's a lot what he was saying, what Jay was saying is this really intense deep dive because where Ryan and I started was, okay, well, where is Wakanda on the continent? Because that's going to then um, determine who then and where before there were borders migrated to this place. Why did they migrate to this place? And then how did they build that land? Why did they stay? What were the confrontations? Da 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 da. So you go through this whole thing of like, okay, what's well, located here on the border of the Congo? You know, basically where Rwanda is, but a little to the west. So, um, you know, you got Mali, you got Bur Burkina Faso, you've got, you know, Nigeria. So we, and then you have Ethiopia, you have all the river tribes. So that's sort of where we took our influences for because naturally that's where they would have gone. Um, that's where they would have ended up. And then how did they discover everything that's there? So it, you just, you know, when Ryan was like, so I need to know what everything is. And I was like, so I'm building a civil, like, you know, <laughs> like what, what, what everything. And it was, and, and the more, here's the thing I found about Al is the more I dug, the more deep that I got, the more that I found, the more questions I had, the more answers I found. It just was this cyclical. Like you just, it's like YouTube. You just fall into a rabbit hole, and right, everybody's done it. Where you're like looking at a cat in Japan. Like this is really, it's like five in the morning. You're like, I have problems, <laughs> and um, you fall into this hole, and you know, <laughs> I call it the YouTube rabbit hole, and um, that's really what we did. And we allowed ourselves to do that free fall, and within that free fall, you start finding finding all these things out about yourself because, you know, is art a reflection or is it a window? And that's always a question that I ask myself when I'm working on a, pro a, pro a project. And it turns out it's both. So it was a reflection of me and it was a window into a world that I knew little about but became more familiar with. That's, you know, when we, I started Ryan and I talking about, like, we need to break these rules, we need to change this narrative. And you kind of go in, as an African-American, I went into that knowing this is a country about, a fictional country about Africa, and I know all the stereotypes because I felt it. I've been in movie theaters where I'm watching it, and you're like, you know, you're like, uh, and growing up with it, and what those stereotypes are, we're still even fighting it today. And I knew, you know, that is not gonna happen on this movie. <laughs> Um, I'll be damned, you know, I'll be damned, and I think so was Ryan in the same way. Like, they're, you know, what if, you know, Africans had their own agency um, and control over their own resources uh, and, and not had, never been colonized? So it was really important for us to change this idea of the dark continent to a place that's modern and futuristic because it actually is when you go there. You know, it actually has cities, and it actually has a country. It's just like every other place where they have countryside, they have rural areas, they have, you know, um, you know, uh, cities, urban areas, highways. I mean, it's it's not. I think the story that we've been told, or that we hang on to a little bit, um, you know. And there was a lot that took me to get over. So that's. I don't. I did not answer anything, but maybe <laughs> somebody out there was like, "I think I got something We're from here that." We're in Rome. <laughs> so, anyways, there it is. Quick follow. Uh, well, I, I mean, it, it is a lot about what we do is a lot about writing rules, yeah. and then you decide whether or not you want to break them or not. And we make up our rules, and then we change them. Um, I just wanted to touch about one thing. Is one of the things that I've noticed uh, in the last years is that we decorators have to come up with ways of lighting uh, in this age. So I just wanted to see Jay if you was could, a lighter. Jay uh, lit this room. Well, and we're, some of you are gonna be quizzed about this as well. But uh, if you could talk yeah, about that. Yeah, that was definitely bit. true on Black Panther. Um, uh, as Hannah said, we built a lot of scenery. And um, we knew that, uh, and it was a really, really fast pace that we were working at. And I knew that if we didn't light the scenery, that uh, they weren't going to see very well <laughs> what we did. I mean, it's as simple as that. And also, um, you know, we wanted a mood in those sets. We wanted it to look a certain way. And if we didn't light them, it, we wouldn't win. We wouldn't get where we wanted to go. So, um, yeah, we pretty much spent a lot of our budget and a lot of time and thought um, figuring out how to light the, the sets. I mean, the casino, <laughs> the, 
the casino, um, uh, we want. <laughs> you know, the, you you know that there's feelings there. We, when I'm like, okay. <laughs> we wanted to hang. Um, what was seventy? There were seventy globes oh, yeah. that we wanted to have hanging in the middle of the space, and we fought for eight weeks with everyone telling us, no, you can't do that, we can't do the effect, we can't do the stunts, you know, the rigs won't work, and it literally took Hannah and I standing in the middle of the set with our <laughs> kind of thing, <laughs> and we weren't, I mean, we weren't super confrontational, but we just were kind of like, no, that can go there, your rig can go there six inches, you know. <laughs> so we protected what we were doing. And Within inches. Yeah, and uh, so there was a lot of that. The conversation of who does lighting, lighting or set deck, who, who is there a fixtures person? Uh, who pays for fixtures, uh, oh, yeah. guy? So that, like, that's changing so much, um, you know. And everyone's in denial. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Total <laughs> denial. Yeah, every movie, the last five movies I've done, every pre-budget meeting, we had to claim the money for fixtures. And I never had to do that before. And, but if I didn't do it, it wouldn't happen, so. It's an evolving profession. Um, Hannah, I have to ask you this question because it's, it's such a privilege to have you, but I have the privilege of being the co-chair of our mentorship program at the, at the Guild. And I don't have to tell you, you know so well, that minorities are underrepresented in the Hollywood guilds. Um, you've been quoted as saying that you will hopefully will be the last to be the first to be honored and uh, for your work. And we have a very large audience, especially on the, the stream. And in, I just wanted, in your own words, how you can encourage those that may have not had the luxury of a fine liberal arts education or, or um, an arts education but have the passion and the love to want to follow in your footsteps, what sort of thoughts would you share with them in terms of how to, to pursue those, those dreams and goals? You know, the, the, I think that the, 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 the one thing that, you know, because that giving advice for that type of thing, because I remember when I was there and I was looking for someone to tell me exactly, like, what do I have to do? Who do I have? Just open up your book and give me a number. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I was. <laughs> With all of There's this, a simple way. exactly. You you just have to have a a drive that is second to only the heat of the sun, <laughs> and endurance because it's a marathon. And you gotta, you know, there was a point in time where I realized, like, oh, I'm putting years here, right? And it's it's you know. But the, but the thing that kept me going is learning, constantly like being intrigued by things that were going around. You know, I started out as a set dresser and I'd walk over to the welders and be like, what are you doing? What is that? Teach me how to do that, you know? And I was very lucky. I worked with Gene Sardina and Grant um, uh, Sampson and they were, you know, were very, they taught me everything. They were very kind about, because we were in a very long movie and I was a set dresser and they were very kind about me walking around to the carpenters and to the painters and wanting to do this and do that and really mentored me into that. And then of course, Wynn Thomas, you know, would call me and kick my butt every once in a while and, <laughs> and, and, and really give me this advice of like, you know, no is powerful. You know, don't, you know, you know when I learned that, it, things started to change. Uh, I remember when saying to me, uh, work on the things that you connect with, you know? And that was another thing that I think things started changing because three weeks after that conversation with when I got um, from Vale Station. So, you know, <laughs> uh, so, and that's when I met Rye. So everything changed then. So I think it's a lot of like determination like just, you know, rejection is but a mere fuel, you know, fire, log on your fire, you know, somebody tells you no, and that's a challenge, you know, it's never a, a rejection or a personal thing, it's just always been a challenge to me, it's like, oh, no, okay, and, and since I was little, so my parents were like, oh, I'm so done with that one, um, you know what I mean, like, they'd say something, I'd be like, no, I'm gonna do it my way, you know, and, um, at little Frank Sinatra running around, my way, and um, or the highway. That was such a word, a phrase. So you know what I mean? It's, it's all of those things, and I think those are the best bits because you're not ever going to really get somebody to open up their black book and give you a phone number or recommend you someplace and they don't really know you or have worked with you at all. So your best bet is to just keep going. 
And I had to remind myself of that. And you know what? I got depressed. I did all the things. I would go up and down and quit. I think I quit this industry a hundred. I'd wake up and be like, that's it. Never again. I'm not, I, you know, that's you know every, every day. day. Exactly. So you will go through these things. You will go through up and downs. You'll have moments where I'm like, I'm so broke. I, how am I eating tomorrow? Like, how am I feeding my child? What am I doing? Like, this is ridiculous. But you just keep going because the passion for what you're doing is stronger than, you know, the need for food at sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, maybe not liquids, but food, sure, certainly. <laughs> and and then, you know, when you start being true to yourself and understanding who you are and finding yourself and you go on a journey and not a job, you things start to open up and you find that people win, you know, that that um, are there for you, Jay, that support you, and you, you um, ride on that strength when you have none. So those are the best words I can give. It's a lot of words, but it's the best words Good I can words. give. <laughs> Thank you both. Brilliant work.